And straight off the top on CBS 4 News at 6, your weather station with a look outside. South Floridians using umbrellas or anything they can find to stay dry on this wet afternoon. The rain, courtesy of a cold front. Live look for you now. It's dropped temperatures dramatically today. If you have been outside lately, then you know winter is back. The temperatures just kind of fell off a shelf oh, yeah. today. It's amazing. Meteorologist David Bernard is here with more. And David, I guess we might feel the 40s? Yeah, very likely we're going to still feel the 40s with the wind or maybe even some of the actual temperatures. Now, the good news is the rest of the night should be dry. It looks like there's a few sprinkles still along the beaches, but other than that, there's no rain back to the west, and I think we're done with it for the time being. The rain today was not that heavy, but it sure was a nuisance with that cold front blowing in and making it feel quite chilly. Here's a look at some of the rain totals that we had across South Florida, and again, very light from Pompano Beach down to Homestead. Everybody generally had a tenth of an inch or less. The uh, highest amount, West Kendall, and that's not saying much, 11 100s. Temperatures right now. 59, 60 degrees. We had a high around 78 this afternoon, so temperatures dropping nearly 20 degrees during the afternoon hours. Now, what about for tonight? Again, we're calling for those upper 40s in the far northern and western sections. This is for Broward County. And again, if the winds are gusty enough out of the north, the wind chills area wide for a brief time could be down into the middle and upper 40s. So certainly for the rest of this evening, overnight tonight, early tomorrow morning, sweaters and some jackets are going to be necessary. 52 in Hialeah in the morning, 48 in West Kendall, Miami Beach, 54 downtown, about 53 degrees as well. Miami Gardens also showing up at about 51. And this this is just part of this cool, warm, and cool trend we're on. Notice the temperatures are going back up over the weekend, and then we've got another plunge coming next week. More details on the weekend in a few minutes. See you in a bit, David. And remember, folks, for weather updates anytime or to check <laughs> on our real-time radar, log on to our website, cbs4.com. Or just get a look at me. <laughs> if you're fed up like most people with your home insurance bill, help is on the way. Today, the governor signed that bill passed by the legislature this week intended to give us all some relief. <laughs> CBS 4's Ted Scout and live in North Palm Beach where the governor made a stop today. Ted? Rob, the governor touts himself as the people's governor, so what better place to sign that bill into law than right here, right on someone's front porch? Taking his signing ceremony on the road, Governor Charlie Chris signs off on the state's new insurance plan, one that drops windstorm rates for Florida homeowners. And we have a message for the people of Florida today. Help is on the way. And that's what this is all about. That help should be on the way soon. The big question, though, how much will we actually save? It appears it will be anywhere from 5 to 20 percent in your current premium. No one's quite sure yet. We don't know. Well, help is on the way. Help is on the way. But at this point, people are desperate for any breaks they can get, like this couple here, thrilled and grateful that at least something passed. We, we all work together. That's what it works. Thank you so much. That's what it works. Thank you so much. Thank you. Governor, have you I can put my kids through college. <laughs> the governor did this ceremonial signing on the front porch of Becky and Charlie Eisenminger's home in North Palm Beach. They represent many whose rates went up, theirs by nearly $4,000, and it will now drop almost in half. They're already hoping to see even more savings with another part of the plan that would allow state-run citizens insurance to compete with others. I would love to see um, citizens be able to offer us something on the homeowner side, not just the windstorm side. So therefore, if they could package it together and give us a better deal than the thousands of dollars we're paying right now, that would be great. So competition's always good. All right, next on the governor's agenda, property taxes. He says people say it's too high. They want it to go down. So he's hoping that he'll be able to take it up in the next legislative session. That gets underway in about a month and a half. We're live in North Palm Beach. I'm Ted Scouten, CBS 4 News. Speaking of the governor, he planned to focus on the new insurance rate cuts, but at least for a few moments, attention turned to a report out of St. Petersburg that he's a father. The St. Petersburg Times says the governor had a fling with this woman, Rebecca Odell Townsend, and signed away his paternity rights to a daughter in 1989. It's uh, unfortunate when things like that come up, but, uh, you know, it, it, it was a campaign thing that somebody carried forward. There's absolutely nothing to it, and I'm not going to give it any more dignity and answer any more about it. Well, the teen's adoptive parents want the governor to take a paternity test to help the college-age girl avoid any kind of political scrutiny. Well, in their first meeting since voters knocked them down a political peg or two, Miami-Dade commissioners decided to jump headlong into a legislative showdown with the new strong mayor. The issue here, who probes county corruption cases? CBS 4's Gary Nelson tells us Miami-Dade's police director is condemning a move to limit the mayor's power and his own. 
I think that both parts need to work together. Miami-Dade commissioners tried to sound a magnanimous tone today, but it was a tough sell. Two days after voters installed Mayor Carlos Alvarez as the strong boss of County Hall. It's a power shift the commission had fought tooth and nail. The voters have spoken, all 14% all of them. Who, who even bothered to go out and vote, um, have spoken. And so I think it's, you know, in our best interest as a commission to work to make this work. The commission had prepared a place for the new strong mayor to sit today, a seat that went empty, leaving some feeling slighted. Alvarez says no slight was intended. He was simply busy with staff preparing for the transition of power. I've personally spoken to maybe half a dozen uh, of the commissioners. They called me and they congratulated me. Uh, there's no message. I was upstairs meeting with my meeting with my manager. The commission chairman pledged to work with the mayor, but not to the point of abandoning what's left of the commission's turf. We will do everything we can. Um, we, as long as uh, the powers of this board are not encroached upon. The board actually moved to encroach on the new strong mayor's powers today, giving initial approval to a bill that would strip Miami-Dade police of authority to investigate public corruption. The fear being that a strong mayor could corrupt the corruption cops. A strong mayor now has the authority to hire and fire the police chief and thus has the ability to influence the anti-corruption unit. Alvarez calls the proposed ordinance absurd and insult to Miami-Dade police. It sends a wrong message. It sends a very dangerous message that uh, our Miami-Dade police department and is not capable and should not investigate cases of uh, public corruption involving uh, elected officials. And police director Robert Parker penned a blistering memo today saying the proposed ordinance would be an obstacle in the pursuit of justice and eliminate our ability to root out corruption and misconduct. Alvarez says if the law gets to his desk, he will veto it. Mayor Alvarez also today addressed a worrisome issue arising from Tuesday's election. Some 1,000 votes that apparently were not cast or not counted by those electronic voting machines. Alvarez says it's further evidence that the touchscreen system needs a verifiable paper trail. In Miami, Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. Less than a week after Hugo Chavez says Fidel Castro is battling for his life, the Venezuelan leader changes his story. Chavez held up a letter yesterday, reportedly signed by Castro himself, and says the signature proves the ailing leader is not dying. Chavez added that Castro has been up and walking in recent days. Chavez even says the leader is so well he's, quote, almost jogging. Chavez didn't say he saw Castro in person, but claims his information is coming from Cuba's vice president. A bit of a break tonight for dozens of families forced out of their Miami Beach apartment building because of a power problem. Yesterday, someone cut the electrical lines to the building off Liberty Avenue, leaving them in the dark. And tonight, the city says it'll set up residents in a hotel until Tuesday. And the owner is willing to give them this month's rent back, plus security deposit and an extra $400. Still, though, some residents say this just is not enough. It is very frustrating because I've missed uh, work, I have missed school, and uh, and you know I it's 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 pretty big headache. Well, some people were let back inside a short time ago to get some belongings. Right now, all the units have power, but the fire system and the common area do not. So officials cannot allow them to stay in the building. Well, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue honors local heroes for acts of bravery. Miguel Martel, Ara Thomas, Juan Acosta, and Peter Maxwell were honored for pulling a person out of a canal back in August of 2006. Felipe Capello and Vincente Correa were also honored for pulling a person out of a canal back in October. In both cases, these men risked their lives to save others. Shifting now to sports, we are just 10 days away until the Super Bowl showdown right here in South Florida. Along with the game will be some major parties. And at the 6 o'clock hour, you might be a little bit hungry, so tonight we're going to get a look at the menu at some of these parties. CBS 4's Nefertiti Jack Wes has the exclusive preview for us. Forget the pizza, chicken wings, and chips. The kitchen is going to be heating up for Super Bowl 41, and by the looks of what's being whipped up in this kitchen, the food is as big as the game. But not everyone is going to be in the mix for this bash. These yummy trimmings are for the stars flying into South Florida for the Super Bowl, and executive chef Sean Brazel with Touch Catering is in charge of serving them up something nice. We're talking walnut-crusted salmon, ribs, and mouth-watering corned beef. What we're doing is we're creating a smaller version of our recipe to get exactly what we need. From our test run, we're going to do batches of 100. We'll do basically 35 batches of 100. 
for the event. And that's enough food for over 3,000 people. The award-winning chef and his team of 300 were hired to create an international-style feast, which includes 28 dishes for the big NFL Super Bowl party. The party, we learned, will be at the Bayfront Park the night before the game. We're in progress. Everything's ready to roll. But Chef Sean wouldn't tell us who's on the VIP guest list. He's only giving us a glimpse of what they'll be eating in the process of getting the food celebrity ready. And the reason that you do this is because you need to make sure that that everything it is going to be exactly. It's going to be good and consistent. You get a high quality of the product. You don't want to produce 3,000 pieces of something that's that's unacceptable. Especially so. when you're feeding so many people and a lot of them being celebrities. Exactly. Now the big party is only days away, so Chef Sean must be feeling the heat, right? Are you stressed yet? I don't know. We're ready. A little. In Miami, Nefertiti Jacquez, CBS 4 News. Yum. And stay with the CBS 4 News team for continuing coverage as we get closer to Super Bowl 41. You can also check out the special Super Bowl section on CBS4.com. Well, it carried a controversial message about immigration, but tonight vandals have taken aim at a South Florida billboard that thousands of you drive by every day. Plus, can using your cell phone cause brain tumors? The new research is causing concern tonight. That's ahead in Dr. Sean's medical file. And I'm David Bernard with you here in Weather Control. There has been a major temperature tumble today. How cold will it get in your neighborhood tonight, and what can you expect for the weekend? My forecast is coming up after this. I'm Jim Barry, up real soon in sports. Mike Shula is back in the NFL. I'll tell you where and what he'll be doing. Meantime in tennis, Roger Federer keeps showing that he is just too good. Get ready for a fabulous February on CBS4. Hey, that's the job. With all new episodes of your favorite shows. CSI Miami, two and a half men. High five. Down low, too slow. The most anticipated television events. Super Bowl 41 in South Florida. The Grammy Awards. Plus news coverage you can count on for all the big stories. It all happens this February, right here on CBS4. Vandals take aim at a South Florida billboard carrying a controversial message. Yeah, when they're done, they leave behind a controversial mm. message of their own. CBS 4's Art Barron, live in Miami with the story you'll see only on 4, Art. That's right, the billboard you see right behind me for the second time has been turned into a free speech message center. Vandals making a political statement from an original message many considered racist in nature. Exactly, because I don't know, I didn't write it. Right, right, right. If I had a soul who wrote it, I'd be glad to let you know if you're black, white, blue, green, or purple. This worn and torn billboard has quite a lot of people talking again. Invasions is derogatory. When somebody invades, that means they weren't, they're not welcome. It depends on how you read it. That someone wants us to stop invading I Iraq. Right now, the billboard, which sits at 79th Street at I-95, has the message, stop the invasion. Under a torn layer, a phone number of the billboard company with spray-painted numbers and words 9-11 was an inside job. There's always a consp conspiracy theory for everything, you know. <laughs> Rewind to seven months ago. We first told you about the controversial message, which took aim at illegal immigration, stop the invasion, secure our borders. Well, someone changed the words back then to secure our hoods, stop the invasion of yuppies, stop gentrification. In June, an anonymous group said it was against displacing low-income people, mostly blacks and Latinos, to make room for large condo developments. The anonymous group said the original billboard was racist. Not so, says the conservative grass grassroots group behind the message. The billboard was posted and paid for by Florida residents, and uh, it's what, what we continue to fight for, border security. Ron DeYoung is surprised to learn the sign is still up after what was supposed to be a two-month lease. If somebody wants to vandalize the board and add their own little moniker to it, that's I guess that's something that you'd have to take up with the billboard company. The billboard brought the anti-immigration debate to South Florida, but John Beers, who owns a landscaping company, says he'd be lost without the help he has. These people are coming in to take jobs that you know, Americans won't take anymore. What would we do without them? Mm -hmm. And so I think we should m make it easier for them to come in and work legally. Well, I spoke with a billboard company. VP of Sales was not aware of the vandalism, but told me a new advertisement for a communications company will be going up there in the next few weeks. It's very latest. We're live out here in Miami. Art Barrett, CBS 4 News. All right, Art. Great news for the city of Hollywood. The South Florida city has been named one of the best 100 communities for young people. The competition organized by America's Promise Alliance prides itself on recognizing communities that provide healthy, safe, and caring environments for young people. 
Hollywood's mayor, Mara Giuliani, will accept the award at a reception in Washington, D.C. tonight. Astronomer Jack Horkheimer is celebrating the release of his first book with local school children. The director of the Miami Museum of Science and Planetarium released his book, Stargazing with Jack Horkheimer, Cosmic Cosmics for the Sky Watcher. It teaches kids about science, stars, and planets, as you could well imagine. David Bernard, I don't think we're going to see any of the above. <laughs> Maybe above. late tonight. It's yeah? going to start clearing off. Oh, right. Okay. The skies are already starting to break. In fact, let's take a look outside this evening, and it's been cloudy and gray all day long, and even though we've got the sun going down now, I think we're starting to see some clearing. I noticed that in Doral tonight. Outside right now, oh my gosh, look at it. We've got 59 degrees of weather control, only 60 at the airports, and 66 at Key West. And for the middle of the afternoon, that's definitely a chill. The big payoff will be tomorrow when the sun comes back out and that stickiness scale is zero and very dry. That's going to be nice. North winds are at six right now. And at weather control today, our rain totals were nine hundredths of an inch. Okay, here are the rest of the temperatures around the state. And again, generally in the 50s, 52 now. Jacksonville and Gainesville has 53. Tampa has a reading of 54, and it's 60 in Fort Myers. Here are some more rain totals today. Not very much in Broward at all, and not much in Miami-Dade. A little bit heavier here in Doral and also West Kendall, just over a tenth of an inch. But... It really wasn't that big of a deal. Now, 12 hours ago, early this morning, the rain was lined up over the Gulf of Mexico, up toward Fort Myers and Tampa and Orlando. And then especially this kind of heavy patch of rain swept across the Keys in far south Florida this afternoon. And now look behind it. Look at all the clearing that's taking place. Tampa and Fort Myers, back to the lake and Fort Pierce, and even over the Everglades. So I really think in the next several hours, you might start to see a few of those stars and planets back across South Florida. Tonight could drop into the upper 40s, northern and western areas of Broward, lower 50s along Interstate 95, and about the same temperature pattern in Miami-Dade. Coldest readings, uh, west and southwest upper 40s, Doral and Sweetwater 51, 52 for around uh, Hialeah and also Miami Springs. And again, with gusty north winds, uh, the wind chill may make it feel like it's in the 40s in some locations. Here's the weather picture today. The low pressure, the rainmaker, that's pushing east into the Bahamas. The cool air is filtering in. Our true view for tomorrow is going to show that blue sky returning, really shaping up to be a very nice day. It's going to be kind of a chilly start in the morning, but we'll say lots of sunshine around and a cool north breeze kind of turning to the northeast, it looks like, late in the day. And then as we go into the weekend on Saturday, I think Saturday is a pretty nice day. We have a warmer breeze. By afternoon, some clouds could start to blow back in on that easterly wind, though, so you might lose some of that sunshine. There could be a spotty shower. Now, Sunday, and it all depends on the track of the low, how far north and south and the speed of it, but right now the front looks to come through in the mid to late afternoon. If that's the case, it's going to be windy and warm with a southwest wind. That should heat us up pretty quickly, and then some rain could blow up the front later on in the day. But once again, that's going to set up for another cool change, and in fact, the cool change coming for early next week looks even stronger than the one we're getting right now, so we could have some very cold mornings with lots of winter sunshine in the afternoon. Here's our forecast for tonight. Again, calling for those upper 40s inland, lower 50s at the coast. Much colder, clearing and breezy. Wind chills as low as the 40s. Tomorrow, 71, plenty of sun, a cool breeze. And watch out, small craft advisory in the Gulf Stream for waves building offshore up to 10 feet. So 71 with sun tomorrow, clouds blowing back in on Saturday and 76, maybe a spotty shower, and then windy and warm and 81 on Sunday, all the way back up to there with maybe some rain blowing in late in the day. All right, Ooh. it looks good. We'll enjoy the cool air. Okay. Thanks, David. From Dr. Sean's medical file, a warning about the dangers of binge drinking, plus new concerns about cell phones and the link to brain tumors. CBS4 Health Specialist Dr. Sean Kniff is here with the details. Doctor, we all have cell phones. That's all right, Joy. And you know what? Until this whole cell phone brain tumor issue is settled scientifically, as a neurologist, I'm going to recommend using a headset like this one, preferably with a cord, while you're talking. I certainly do, and here's why. Finished researchers say people who have used cell phones for more than 10 years are 40% more likely to develop brain tumors on the same side of the head where they hold the phone. Though other studies have found no increased risk at all, this study is the second recent study to link the phones to brain tumors. And most alcohol-related health problems are not caused by alcoholism, but rather by binge drinking. A new survey by New Mexico researchers finds almost 17% of people drink excessive amounts of alcohol that could eventually lead to serious health problems like fatty liver, liver cirrhosis, and congestive heart failure. Now, most experts would consider having five or more drinks in any one sitting binge drinking, and it's the most common form of alcohol abuse. Dr. Sean Kniff, CBS4 News. Wow, thanks, right. Doc. So, Sean, you should have a phone with a cord, not the Bluetooth. Well, yeah, well, the, the Bluetooth broadcast. does transmit some radiation as well, so I mean, but it, less so than than your typical phone. But this is probably the lowest way to reduce your radiation right. exposure. Right. Great, we'll Thanks, watch Tom. that.
We'll be right back. CBS 4 Sports is brought to you by South Florida Cadillac Dealers. Test drive a 2007 Cadillac today. Jim Barry is in uh, uh, with the sports and with the yes. Super Bowl. Some teams don't like to be ranked as the favorite, do they? Nobody likes to be the favorite because yeah. the expectation is so high. Yeah. But come on, these are the monsters of the midway. They're Bears, supposed to be yeah. favored. But the Bears could be peeved that they are listed as Super Bowl underdogs. But in their minds, you know what? The underdog's life is really not so bad. I was in Phoenix earlier this month where Urban Meyer's team was a touchdown underdog. And look what happened. Florida just destroyed Ohio State to become college football champs. Well, now, Gator alum Rex Grossman finds his Chicago Bears viewed in the same light. And as he gears up for the Colts, you know what? That role might be a relief. You know, I, I think anytime you're, you're in the underdog role, you're, uh, um, you know, that much more intense and, and focused and, and um, you know, out for respect. All right, in case you've been under a rock somewhere, guess what? Just 10 days till Super Bowl 41, and you can see the big game where, guys? Only on CBS for your official definite Super Bowl station. All right, Mike Shula is back in the NFL, but not with the Dolphins. Don Sons hired in Jacksonville as the Jags quarterback coach. In the NBA, Ron Rothstein trying to figure out why the heat fizzled again in Indy. The Pacers' Danny Granger helps them erase a 20-point deficit. Dwayne Wade keeps the heat alive with his 3 to force OT, scores 32. But when Jason Capono tries to win it in overtime, bad luck. In, then out, and the Heat lose a heartbreaker. And yes, Shaquille O'Neal does return, but no, he ain't the real Shaq yet. Uh-uh. Diesel looking a little out of sync. His basketball reflex is not quite there. Shaq finishing with five points in 14 minutes with O'Neal. Hey, he's human. It's going to take some time. You know, we got to go through the process. You know, we got to get him out there. Got to get his legs under him. He's a little rusty right now, but, uh, you know, we'll work him back in gradually. All right, at the Australian Open, call him the maestro. <laughs> Roger Federer is so good, even he can't believe it. He had Andy Roddick flinging his racket in frustration. A-Rod, watch this. It's a huge serve, then a booming forehand, and still loses the point. Roger says, sorry, I'm so good. Roddick storms the net. Federer passes him every time, destroying Roddick in straight sets. Federer reaches his seventh straight Grand Slam final. Wow. USA will be represented in the women's final. Serena Williams shows her game still rips. Boom. Serena is gunning for another slam in that green outfit. She's going to have to go through Maria Sharapova. Maria thumps Kim Kleisters, setting up an all-sluggers women's final. Well, it may seem a bit early, but hey, let's talk a little baseball. At UM, the Canes again have high expectations. So does the college baseball world. The Canes rank second in the preseason polls. They crank up their season next week. Last year, Jim Morris's young team got seasoned, but he still feels they've got to prove it again. Yeah, we have a talented club. Uh, uh, we're not a number two team right now, but I think that we can be a team, one of the top teams. We just have a lot of work and a lot of stuff to do as a team to get ready. Well, as we know, the Dolphins are not in the Super Bowl, but still making their time count. Randy McMichael and Rex Hadnot visiting Lake Stevens Elementary. A reward for the school winning an essay contest. Randy and Rex will have a little trouble squeezing into those desks, but they still have a good time. Hey, make certain that you join us Sunday morning for crunch time at 1130. Two of the all-time great NFL running backs joining us, Marshall Falk and big bad Jim Brown wow. on Crunch Time. You know, Jim Brown, he's, I don't know, 60-something, but that guy is yeah. boom, boom. Huh? Yes. And those big guys in the little desks, Not did the desks survive? <laughs> yeah, they did. We wouldn't these. survive. You're going to hurt me one of these now. Are you going to have to separate you two? Yeah. All right. You might have to. We'll, we'll be right back. Do my Jim Brown. <laughs> Next, E.T. Inside Christy Brinkley's divorce papers. Then, the Men in Trees love affair scandal. Plus, Miss USA Tara Connors. And a surprise TV proposal. We're with the mystery bachelor popping the question. Next, E.T. Tonight, it's 7 on 4. Tonight. Let me try something I did in Philly. It's called reverse forensics. We fake a crime scene. The hardest part is stopping leaks. You've got to be willing to deceive the people you work with. We can't trust Catherine, and we can't trust Kepler. We're a team now, the four of us. New CSI. Then, working as an L.A. prosecutor has its perks. It could also be deadly. If they just kill one of our own, somebody's got to pay. Shark after a new CSI tonight.